Yo, what's going on everybody? Suburban Legend here, bringing you guys another episode of Operation Man Cave, the uh, longest road to setup video on YouTube. I <laughs> uh, really don't have any construction progress to show you guys this time, it's pretty much the same as it was last week. Um, so they just got some taping done down there and some some sanding on the walls and waiting for them to come back and texture and paint this week and we'll get back moving again, some construction delays. But anyways, I figured I'd take this opportunity to throw up another video and uh, show you guys the components that I have ordered for my setup, go through the projector and some of my thoughts on that and uh, and all that. So, anyways, I know I touched on this briefly in episode number one, but uh, you know, I'm, like I said, you know, I'm gonna help you guys in case any of you ever <laughs> want to do a, a home theater screen setup and projector and stuff like that too. So, um, anyways, I came up with an $1,800 budget for my setup, and the reason I came up with this is because two years ago. Um, you know, I talk to my brother every day. We're good good friends and stuff, and, and we're kind of competitive too. So two years ago, he sent me some pictures of this 55-inch LED Samsung flat-screen TV. He, he just bought at Best Buy. And I said, holy crap, that thing is sweet. You know, what, what did that run you? And he said it was 1800 bucks. And I thought, that's a pretty nice TV for 1800 bucks. But uh, right then and there, I, I kind of made a mental note in the back of my mind that, you know, I'm going to stick with this this crappy blowout uh, day after thing Black Friday special TV that I got for like 300 bucks a couple years ago. Just a little 40 inch knockoff brand. Uh, pretty crappy TV, but still the best TV I've ever owned. So I said, you know what, I'm going to resist the urge to go out and buy one of these huge Samsung TVs and spend between $1,500 and $1,800. And I'm going to do an entire basement home theater for $1,800 budget. And that includes the the projector, the screen, the speakers. And then when I get that all finished, I'm going to invite my brother over next time he's in town, and I'm going to show him. I'm going to say, yep, you got your little Samsung TV, but this is what I did with that exact same amount of cash. And uh, hopefully make him a little bit jealous, you know. <laughs> Not that I'm one out of spite, but, you know, like I said, my brother and I were very competitive with each other. So just want to show him, uh, show him what's up. <laughs> so anyways, I've been saving up money for the last two years, and I got an $1,800 budget to spend on this as far as the uh, the components of my setup go, so uh, first things first, and like I said, I've been saving up for two years, so I've been doing research for literally the last two years. I read every projector review there is out there. Uh, when it came to projectors for me, it came down to this Epson here, this Epson Powerlight Home Cinema 8350 versus the Mitsubishi HC 4000 projector, which uh, you know same price point. And according to the reviews that I read, the Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi, sorry, I can't pronounce that word, actually has a little bit better picture quality. But the reason I picked this Epson, first of all, is because it has a better warranty, a uh, two-year warranty as opposed to one year with the Mitsubishi. And that's the thing with projectors is they do tend to break down from time to time, so you're going to want to get one with a decent warranty. Um, and the price on screen right now is just shy of 1200 bucks. I actually got this for under 1100 You know, I, <laughs> I mean, I've been looking at price every day for two years. So I finally, when it dipped under 1100 I placed the order right away. So saved a little, probably an extra 70 80 bucks right there just by being patient and having everything planned out. Um, so I got the projector for $1,100. But the main reason, too, is that uh, response time and input lag is a big factor for me, being that I, like, I'm, you know, I'm hoping to record uh, all of my gaming sessions on here. So... Um, this Epson has between 10 to 20 milliseconds of lag. Um, you know, your average television is going to be around 8 to 10 milliseconds, I'd say, if it has a gaming mode. Um, and most computer screens, if you're gaming on a monitor, are between 2 and 4 or 5 milliseconds of lag. So it does have a little bit more lag, but as far as a projector goes, this is almost unheard of a projector with between 10 to 20 milliseconds of lag. Um, Epson has a lot of 3D projectors they just came out with, but they're actually all over 100 milliseconds of lag, which is several frames. And uh, people say they can't even play, you know, non-Twitch shooters on there. They can't even play games like Rock Band, you know, without calibrating it heavily. Or even a game like Uncharted, they said it's almost tough to, to time the button taps because it's so far behind with, with the input lag. So, um, And this projector definitely is beastly. You know, like I said, I everything's ordered, so this projector actually got here couple weeks ago I you know figured the basement would be finished by then so I could install it but it's not so um, I've actually used this projector several times and it, it's unbelievable picture quality um, I'm just shining it on the on the textured wall up in my living room <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I'm not going to show you guys that I don't want you to see it until it's all finished up and done and wrapped up so um, anyways there's the first $1,100 my budget went towards that projector um, and I'll show you guys all that 
when it's all finished up. Uh, the next 350 bucks went towards this screen, and this actually dropped in price a little bit since I ordered it. Uh, Elite screens, it's a 120 inch screen, um, or 10 foot. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to sound cocky, but the the line I came I came up with the other day was, uh, uh, you know, you know your your gaming setup is good when you stop measuring your displays in inches and you start measuring your displays in feet. <laughs> um, not to sound cocky, I just thought that would be that's I don't know something funny I just felt like throwing in here at some point in time. So, uh, anyways, I'm gonna have a 10 foot screen going on down there. So, is it gonna be the best for gaming? Probably not, but I'm gonna game on it anyways, just because. It's awesome. I mean, I'm I've been watching movies on this thing just projected against a textured wall, and just the experience of it is is awesome. You know, watching a screen that big when you're that close to it, it literally feels like you're in the movie. You know, it just it's tough to explain unless you experience it. You know, it's just like going to a, a movie theater. You know, it's such an immersive experience in the movie or the game or whatever you're playing, uh, whatever content you're enjoying. So. That's the next 350 bucks my budget. So now we're up to uh, $1,450, leaving what $350 left. And that went to this Ankeo right here, the home theater system in a box. <laughs> now, a lot of experts will tell you don't buy a home theater in a box. It's crap. It's junky. Um, well, this system right here is going to prove them wrong because, uh, you know, this I also have too. I hooked it up in my living room for the time being. And this thing rocks. It absolutely pounds the... Uh, receiver is great it has four hdmi inputs and one output so basically i just run the receiver to my projector and everything else hooks right up into the receiver here um, you know your xbox your playstation if you have an apple tv or uh, anything else um, even your hd pvr you can run everything right in through this receiver here and uh, output it to your to your uh, projector so this thing absolutely pounds it's it's unbelievable really and i just have it hooked up in my living room which is a really awkward shaped room so it's not ideal for sound quality and this is just it's crazy it's uh, for 350 about 350 dollars it's really good um, they say the one caveat about this on keel is they basically you know you're paying most of the money towards the receiver and they give you entry level speakers but uh, you know what it'll get me started for now a uh, couple years down the road if I have some money and I'm looking to upgrade the receiver is still going to be good to go and you can just upgrade each individual speaker from there so it's a really good place to start if you're a, a beginner like I am <laughs> in home theater and you don't have a ton of money to spend um, I know a lot of people probably say eighteen hundred dollars is a lot to spend too but you know this is my passion this is sort of my hobby and my pastime you know I don't go out and blow my money at bars or gamble uh, stuff like that like a lot of <laughs> other my other friends do so um, so yeah, I've basically just been saving up for this for a while, and I'm, I'm really excited to get it all wrapped up and get it all finished, and uh, to show you guys what it looks like and see how it turns out. So, <laughs> um, Another cool thing about this on Kio I just thought of is it actually has uh, a newer setup. Uh, you know, most people say just install it as 7.1 surround sound, but uh, the new thing that they just came out with, Dolby, it's called Dolby Pro Logic 2Z. And uh, what you do is you actually take the two rear speakers, uh, the 7.1s in the back, you can actually mount them up high above the screen. And what that does is that plays uh, aerial audio. Like if there's a helicopter that flies over your head during a movie or uh, bullets flying way above you or, you know, like if there's a shootout scene and there's always, you know, they shoot a light out or something falls from the ceiling. Um, apparently it sounds pretty crazy. So I haven't tried it out yet, but... Uh, Nevertheless, I wired up my basement for both ways, um, so I can try 7.1, and if I'm not satisfied with it, I can switch to the that new setup and see how that sounds. But uh, anyways, a lot of you probably could care less about that, but I just figured I'd throw that out there in case any of you are looking at, uh, you know, picking up a theater system or some speakers or a projector or anything like that. So uh, this has been another episode of Operation Man Cave. If you guys have any questions as far as your setup or if there's anything I can help you out with, um, if you're thinking of getting a projector, you know, let me know. I've had two friends over so far, showed them that projector, just shooting at a textured wall, and both of them are now uh, wanting to buy a projector. You know, they can't believe it's only $1,100. Most people nowadays spend that much on a little 50-inch TV. But uh, if you have the space and the room, you might as well go projector nowadays. I mean, this thing's bright enough you can use it during the day, too. But uh, during the night, you get the best picture quality. So 
I'm going to wrap this video up. It's been about 10 minutes. I could just ramble on and on all night. So, uh, anyways, this has been Suburban Legend bringing you guys another episode of Operation Man Cave. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Hopefully some construction progress updates for you if I can get uh, get some contractors over here to do some work. So, all right. Peace out.